Hey everybody, it's Chainsaw Reacts back once again on the reaction for you guys. Take us closer to the journey of my adventures with Superman. This is season two, episode seven. I really love this title, Olsen's Eleven. Basically, a play on Ocean's Eleven. I love that title so much. And I have to say, season two has been pretty good in terms of this show. Season two has been good, and I really enjoyed season one. Had a great time with that. But I really feel the show has definitely like turned in from being pretty solid in terms of the season into really good when Supergirl was officially shown and I think it was episode five yeah and so I think that was the turning point in terms of the show going from good to great in terms of this season so I'm really curious to see what's going to happen here because I watched episodes five and six back to back because I had skipped episode five watching it uh, when it had dropped that week but I think it really worked in terms of me as a viewing experience because watching Supergirl's introduction and then the turning point and her taking Clark to father Brainiac it was a big two-parter, essentially, that I basically had built for me to watch back-to-back. -back. And so I'm really curious to see what's going to happen here because Kara has basically figured out she thinks that she's turning all these worlds, including Than Thanagar, into this new Kryptonian era or whatever. In terms of she's actually been killing and destroying all these planets. And then at the very end, here's Olsen and Lois. And then I forget their names, but um, the Brain and... Um, I think it's the brain and the gorilla, which we saw in season one. Like, they had a pretty significant episode in season one. I forget the name. Sorry, I'm bad with names in general, so I'm not remembering on top of my head. But I'm really curious where we go from here, here because now there's a lot of things that have to kind of unfold because we still have, you know, 10 full, full episodes. Can't even talk this morning. Sorry, I'm still trying to wake up. 10 full episodes of the season, so... There's got to be more at play here in terms of the story than just saving Clark and then stopping Brainiac. There has to be more going on because also we have Task Force X and everything like that as well involved with Amanda Waller and Lex. So we'll see what happens with that too because that, that still has to come into play at some point. Because I think season three has been confirmed. So there's still more to go. So thankfully the show is not going to be ending in this season. So anyways guys, let's dive into now. Season two, episode seven, Olsen's Eleven. Let's go. Superman isn't a hero. Mm. Superman and his kind have declared war on Ooh. HDC the protection of Metropolis. Martial law is now in effect. I don't think I've ever paused while watching this show, but that I don't think I've ever paused while watching the show in perfect timing with the title there and everything. Having Amanda Waller use this time for Superman to be off world to implement all this shit is just <laughs> ridiculous but it was all planned right it really was planned because as soon as they realized oh he's off world right now he was taken away but they don't know that part right they're not talking about the fact that he was defeated by his cousin or by another kryptonian that looks kind of like him in terms of the design of the suit and everything in the s and then he was taken forcibly right but we leave that part out because oh even though clark he wasn't he, he wasn't attacking people he was protecting but of course that's not the narrative so that's what's going on here anyways guys let's continue let's go metropolis would not have needed saving if superman wasn't here in the first place the end mm. came for him but this station has obtained its own footage which we're gonna put that's classified but thank you for bringing it to my attention can't be happening clark's been kidnapped oh so we're seeing their perspective before they go through the portal and, and meet kara we are going to find clark i need to make things right yeah i guess things oh they, yeah, things are falling apart yeah in episode five you wait, wait, wait. Don't you oh we need your skills and you and i don't regret helping superman stop you but now shut up and get to the point <laughs> we need you to help us break into star labs to steal a spaceship willing to pay Wow. No. Whatever it takes. He spent the rest of his net worth? Oh my god. Whoa. Do anything. Okay. Mm, okay. Know, Something's gonna happen though. Something bad's probably gonna happen with them. Good luck. You're gonna need it. So wow. So, uh I might know some people who can help us. What? Yep. Who? Well, Jimmy. yes. What? It turns out every dimension has already its own mana and brain. Okay, we're on the clock, people. <sighs> Let's go. He's like, what? <laughs> Ooh, fancy. I'm Alexis, security system, and look the cameras. 
Okay, good. But so let me turn this all the brain in. Like, what? But the clip is they have, so we can make modifications. <laughs> Hold on. We never said anything about modifications. What's plan B? Chaos. <laughs> We're no. not hurting people. We do this peacefully. How's this? My cool computer. Nope, put that back. Oh, like this laser gun. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Stop touching everything. <laughs> Everyone's so trigger happy. Yeah, so trigger happy. <laughs> she took Clark. I say it's pretty mm -hmm. simple. Well, exactly. This is our only weapon against her. What what you mean? Whatever. Wrap it up. Yeah, wrap it up. Let's go. Stick to the plan. General, uh, we weren't expecting oh. you. Oh. Well, that's kind of the point of a surprise inspection. Seen a donut. Why not? Shift ends in three, two. Oh. Hello. Henshaw was supposed to let you know I, I wouldn't usually do this, but if you want to go see her right now, I can cover this shit. Seriously? That'd be great, huh? Jimmy's doing a nice thing, but I mean, not really, but... Mm. Yeah, you're a real hero. Cameras? Well, I mean, he got him to go see his, you know? Looked in this room. Okay, they're in the room that they said they were going to be in, so, so far, so good. As you can see, security has never been tighter. We've converted two of our hangers to sort of project M prototypes. I can show you the feed. I'm back engineering an alien substance into a new type of power source. We need time. <sighs> that was so close. Oh. Yep, yep. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Oh, damn. Blackwire, hold the door. Sorry, kids. Rory's wrong. I do know when to walk away. Shit. Oh, my God. I knew she was going to abandon them. This is all her fault. Well, well it's not that simple. Of course it's simple. She's not a lost cause, man. She just needs people to help her. And she's already seeing the errors of the things. We made it. Better be careful. Him. Yeah, exactly. Ooh. I'm never going to see him again. Well, we know that they somehow him. get there, so someone has to fix it. I don't know why I broke up with him. I, I got scared he wouldn't love me back the same way. Ah! And they're getting shot at, of course. That must be Metallo's. Get on the ship, let's go! Uh... Yeah, they broke through. And there we go, okay. Oh, they're not done. I figured as much, yeah. Ooh. Damn. After I let you in, Rory left to put together the actual crew. Oh, I okay. I realized you were after the ship. The armory would be unguarded. You got scared, but love is not for cowards. Oh, well, there's still even more. Okay, take him out. Come on. Love is not for cowards. That's right. Exactly. Get out of here. You gave it a good shot, but they still got away. This was a success. At only 10% capacity, it stood up to alien tech weapons and superpowers. I know we can get through to her. I'm and then when they go through the portal, they're going to get right to Supergirl. And went to the garden and watched the sunset together. Did you go on a date with Carl? The machine is a machine. Yep, 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 yep.
And there you guys have it. And the title makes so much sense because essentially Olsen's 11, the title, is because Jimmy paid for Livewire to do all this, even though she had a backup plan with Heatwave and some other characters to basically go and steal a bunch of stuff and leave them to take the fall and then turn around and actually help save the day. Now, of course, we saw it in the last episode because we're now seeing everything leading up to that moment of interacting and seeing Kara again out in space. But we got uh, Mansur Mala, like, I, I think I pronounced that name. Anyways, the gorilla and the brain back into the fold. And we got to see how they got their involvement. And they mentioned about multiverse travel. And there's other versions of them in every single universe they visited or something to that effect. So they don't need to really travel the multiverse necessarily because there's other versions of them out there like in on every Earth that they've at least visited. So interesting to kind of hear that. And maybe that's implying there is a Superman on every single Earth. Maybe, maybe there's a lowest lane on every single earth. I don't know. Maybe that, maybe that's what they're kind of implying, or, or at least, like, who knows how much traveling they actually, they actually did in the multiverse. But anyways, the idea of this like being a heist, like you know, basically the tone of it and the kind of uh, episode it is being a heist, it actually works because I like the fact that this show has done a variety of different kind of stories throughout its run of its now being, you know, getting close to the end of this is episode seven and we have three more to go for this season. Looking at season one and season two, there is been a variety of different kinds of stories they've told because a lot of times with superhero shows, they're very like limited on what kind of stories they tell because of the characters they have. But in this case, having a heist episode in terms of like the majority of it is the heist itself. I think it really works. Now, we also get to see the dynamic more so with Lex and everything and Amanda Waller and Deathstroke as well because Lex revealed like his not fully ready to go out Metallo robots and Deathstroke saw it as a failure because ultimately they got the ship. Of course, we knew they got the ship in Lois and like they, they, they flew away. We know they get it. But how? Well, the Metals were used, and they were basically just knocked over like nothing because Heat Wave and, um, and Livewire showed up and just was decimating them like nothing. But Amanda Waller saw potential like saying they were only at 10% capacity so that they could be a lot deadlier. And so, I don't know. I'm guessing, I guess depending on your perspective, because they still lost the main ship, they still lost that entirely. So, I, I, I don't know. I guess Amanda Waller is looking at the bigger picture of it all. Like, the Metallos can be functional if we use them as high priority. Like, they're the top prior priority now. And we don't use just, like, a very low percentage of its usage. We can actually do more than 10%. And boom, we'll have a super soldier army to go against Superman. Because as I paused in the episode towards the beginning... Amanda Waller is using this opportunity now with Superman being gone, even though she's being very selective. And the fact is there was a little interview, right, that she was on where a guy was going to show footage that wasn't obtained by them, Task Force X, by, you know, the human defense, whatever, this program that, that she's implemented now, where it's martial law over Metropolis, which can the government get involved and shut this down? I don't know. But anyways... The fact that, he, that they were going to show footage because that guy was like, well, you seized all footage involving the incident minutes after it occurred. And there's, and there's, I, you know, people like, like, you know, people who witnessed the whole thing saying what you're saying is not accurate. And, but I will say this, Amanda Waller does make a, a, a decent point, a pretty solid point, if you will, by saying, well, Metropolis would not have been in danger at all if he was, not, if he, if he wasn't even here in the first place. If Clark wasn't on this planet, Superman, when he's saying Clark, but if Superman was on the planet, then his cousin would have never showed up. His his fellow Kryptonian would have never showed up here. So with him being here, and he sent the beacon out to, for, for her to find and to come see him or whatever, to come meet, then this would have never occurred. Fair point. But Superman was took her away, away from civilian life, away from Metropolis. But of course, you know wasn't going to happen. I really wish he would I really wish that guy would have been allowed to show the footage. And how how was she able to stop the footage from being shown when she's just a guest on that guy's show? <laughs> it's like an interview thing. I don't understand how she was able to magically click. No, that's classified. Uh, how can you stop a like I don't know. I get I I understand how that was so fast. Like I wonder what the footage would have been if we would have been able to see it in what perspective what was shown. I'm guessing it would have showed Superman actually trying to stop people from getting any closer to run away cuz here comes my cousin and then him taking her away from the city. 
but I guess you know that 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 it goes against the narrative of martial law and how Superman's the bad guy and we're gonna be ready for him when he returns and all that. Um, I really enjoyed the dynamic of Lois and Jimmy in this episode, and of course with all the other characters, and especially Livewire, who I kind of figured there's gonna be a turning point, and there was in terms of for like abandoning them, and of course she comes back and says that I knew that she was gonna come back. He wave I, I was a little surprised. But it makes sense because they all had it planned out in terms of like things they were going to be doing. So it was all a kind of double cross plan that ultimately ended up benefiting them at the end. I forgot um, the Jimmy thing a little bit because Jimmy really hasn't had a conversation with Superman, with Clark, since things kind of went down in episode four. And Lois also has a thing because her and Clark were about to break up right right as Carl was revealing herself and showing him, like, I came all this way. And then she revealed herself and being the evil Kryptonian. So Jimmy and Lois, they both have big conversations to have with, with Clark, with Superman. They have huge conversations to have with him. And, they, and I think that's what's pushing their guilt and pushing themselves even more so because they need to have that time because they're in a weird spot with him, right? And I think he knows ultimately he's still best friends with Jimmy. He still loves Lois. He doesn't want to break up with her. However, with everything kind of going on in terms of like his cousin showing up and here's the father, Brainiac, and all this shit, it's a lot to take in. And then you have all these other personal stuff going on. So it's a lot on his mind. So I think it's just reaffirming where him and Jimmy stand and where him and Lois stand is going to be the thing. Cause I feel like they're probably going to have big conversations with both these characters with him individually, not together. I feel like together that, I mean, I can see a, a version of that where they do all have a conversation, all three of them, and they just kind of get on the same point. But I feel like Jimmy and Clark need to have a separate conversation as well as, you know, Clark and Lois. Because they both are in very different situations in terms of their relationship with each other. And I feel like it would just m make it more personal if he had those conversations with both of them separately to, f to kind of get on a better a better standing, I guess, if you will. Because he doesn't want to lose his best friend, Jimmy. He doesn't want to lose his love, his love of his life. I said he doesn't know the love of his life, but his girlfriend, he doesn't want to lose her either. So it's about, you know, having those moments. So... I like the fact that we got to see the perspective of the lead up to when they meet with Carl. I wish it would have actually continued a little bit, but they're making us wait until episode eight for that continuation, which I understand because you want to build it up, right? Because we don't even know exactly how they got that ship, how they got the brand and, and you know, how they got all of them to come along. And now we saw that perspective. So I get the point, but it's like, I want to see the continuation of, ah, because Lois Ray just dropped kryptonite. Ankara and, and Jimmy kept saying, No, you, you, why is everyone trigger happy? Like, everyone's like wants to go fighting and shit. And then eventually, thankfully, Lois is like, Okay, fine, 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 fine. I will, I will try to talk to her <laughs> before I pull out the kryptonite. Jimmy's like, That's all I'm asking. That's all I'm asking is just try, please try. So, yeah, this was pretty, this is pretty solid stuff here. I'm excited to see where it goes from here. I, I, episode eight better continue with you know, the ship running into her and everything that, that, that they better not cut to later on. Like it needs to be immediate. We need to see what happens next. When the screen cuts black from both episodes, these past two weeks, we need to see what is that first conversation. And I feel like they're going to give it to us. They're just making us wait for it because, because they know us, the audience who are invested in the show, loving the show and enjoying the show. We're ready for this. We're ready for this because she's, because cars realized, okay, I screwed up. I did all these bad things. You know, I didn't realize I was under like the control that I was under. And now I realize all of it. It's all a shit show. It's a disaster. So I'm excited. Hope you guys enjoyed the reaction. I'm curious to what you guys thought about this episode. Let me know your thoughts guys in the comments below. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace out.